So what I want to talk about is the embedded. We have Java SE embedded. We have Java ME embedded. Angela, don't make my life difficult. Why we have two? OK? So we're going to study different scenarios. We're going to see what each platform provides you with and which one it is the correct one. Who is it going to decide? It is you. OK? You need to know and understand the constraints on the, of the device where you are going to run your Java application. OK? There is no one solution fit us all. Okay, there's not that magic. The magic is going to come from you. Okay, so one thing is analyzing the platform. What are the constraints that you have? Okay, and the other one is what are you trying to build? Okay, so my latest example from last uh, Java One in San Francisco, I have a session. It was uh, wearable. You know, everybody's talking about wearable, right? Super cool topic. So I did a wearable jacket, OK? The, wear, the idea with the wearable jacket, it was um, powered by a Raspberry Pi. I have a whole bunch of sensors, right? So I have an accelerometer, I have a gyroscope, I have a GPS, I have a pulse, um, uh, uh, pulse um, sensor. So it was actually, I have a heart rate, polar heart rate monitor. It was sending me to a little tiny <coughs> board that talked to the Raspberry Pi, so I was getting uh, my, 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 my pulse and analyzing it. And I actually, in my other hand, I have a control panel where I can actually control the music, okay? So it was actually very cool. So for that sort of environment, I didn't have user interface, but I have a lot of sensors. And we're gonna see through the presentation ME embedded is really good for connecting peripherals. So independent of the platform, because Raspberry Pi allow you to run both ME and SE. So the platform in that case was irrelevant. It was the same platform. It was about what application I was building, OK? So first, OK, got a bunch of sensors, perfect. So I'm going with ME because I have this API that allow me to talk to peripherals, okay? As I move on, so the jacket was built, I have lights, everything is good with lights, right? Funky lights. There was something missing, using interface. Hmm, I can listen to music, I actually can use uh, free text, and actually the, what I was doing is getting my email and translate it into voice, so I have Raspberry Pi, reading my email, OK? But again, no user interface. And I say, hmm, what about Google Glasses? What about if I create my own glasses? Hmm. So I found these glasses. I took them apart, and I create my little display. So I have now user interface. Cool. What happened? Java ME embedded doesn't have a user interface. Okay, so even though the sensor power was there, the APIs, I didn't have the UI. For the UI, I needed things like, in my case, I love JavaFX, so I needed Java SE embedded. So again, this talk is not telling you about which one to use. This talk is about providing you with the tools so you can analyze and define what you need depending on the platform or depending on the application you're building, OK? And again, Angela Caicedo, Java evangelist, all the way from Sun Microsystem. Um, any question, feel free to send it to me. Again, said it before. I said it again. Few changes from Sun and Oracle, this one. I have to present you with this. You all read it and approve it. It's pretty much saying anything that I can talk, that I'm gonna talk, might change, okay? So the agenda. So we're gonna talk about the platforms and the different designs for each, okay? We're gonna understand ME. 
we're going to compare a little bit, OK? How I configure, what are the footprints, OK? And some tips. So this is giving you like hints. So if you think about it, Java, the spectrum of Java, is very wide. All the way from little tiny Java cars to big machine and huge applications, OK? All the way from there. So we have Java car, Java ME embedded, Java SE embedded, OK? And I'm sure you're seeing this picture many, many times, OK? So what is the idea? The idea with this is be able to unify the Java ecosystem, OK? So let me ask you, how many of you are Java developers? OK, Java developers, do I have more? More? Are you shy? Are you Java developer? OK, keep your hands up. Now, lower, just leave your hand up if you are an embedded developer. If you are not, not embedded developer. Embedded developer, very few. OK, now again, how many of you are Java developers? OK, now, you are all embedded developer. It's the same library. That's what we're trying to do, OK? If you know how to program Java, you know how to program for embedded devices. There's nothing different. You just need to know what the API. But it's no learning curve. There is no different, OK? So that's what we're trying to do. Java ecosystem is huge. We're trying to unified, so by having that unified version of it, if you are a Java developer, you're already a Java embedded developer, OK? So we're talking about Emmy being the little sibling of SE, OK? Portability of your application. So being able, if your application work on Emmy, it should work in SE, OK? Of course. We need, to we need to be careful with the footprint, right? So that's the key principles. And now we're looking into, re uh, into release cycles to be in sync. So there's not going to be more like ME is here, SE is here. No, they are together, and they're evolving together, OK? The benefit, again, if you're a Java developer, you're ready to go, OK? Same core APIs. Send development tools, OK? So a lot of advantages. This is what happened with the APIs and the language before Java 8. So if you look at the mess of the APIs, so you have in blue, SE, and in light blue and yellow, ME. And see how disparate they were in terms of the APIs, OK? So basically, it was like a different thing. You have Java, and then you have ME here, OK? From the language, yeah, it was similar. It was the same language, OK? So no many issues here. What we're moving into now is bringing Java ME into SE, OK? We are not totally inside. That's what we're planning for future, that that ME of the API be totally contained on SE APIs. Right now, outside, we have, remember, at the beginning, I was mentioned the APIs to talk to peripherals. Those APIs are only available on ME. So those are the APIs that are out, OK? The future is those APIs will be also available on SE, OK? So those API will be part of the platform. Language is no issues. We're still working a little bit of the Lambda support and stuff like that, but we're in pretty good shape, OK? Again, there is no magic formula. There is no one size fit us all, OK? So there is no such a thing. Why? Because there are different Devices, there are different cases, there are different applications, OK? So let's have a look at the Java ME, OK? So Java ME, we're talking about very constrained devices, little tiny sensors, OK? 
So focus is size, simplicity, and portability, okay? And that's not the focus on Java SE. On Java SE, what we want is performance. Perform, have a large application be able to uh, have a great performance, be compatible, okay? And be general purpose embedded user cases. So again, it's just different focus, okay? For ME, for example, we're looking into low end and mid range resource constraint. In the other side, for SE, we are not that constrained. We can actually be mid range to high end general purpose embedded platforms. Okay? Now, for ME, so we have Java 8 alignment plus some functionality dedicated for embedded cases, as I mentioned, those APIs that we call it the device access API, okay? For SE, we look into functionality plus embedded configuration and optimizations, okay? So again, they were created for different purpose, so it's up to you, depending on where you're running, to decide. A little bit of Emmy. So I'm pretty sure you've seen this many, many times because it hasn't changed much. Um, few things that have changed on the um, Emmy. So we always, Java always require the virtual machine, okay? That is part of what we call in Emmy, we have a configuration and on top of that, we have a profile, okay? Configuration, we're talking in the latest one, CLDC or Java Connected Limited Device Configuration 8, okay? And on top of that, for the profile, we're talking about ME EP8. So what is pretty much is the CLDC is the underlying platform, the minimum that we need to execute code, Java code. And on top of that, we have a specialized APIs. Plus, some other interesting APIs, like I already mentioned, the device IO APIs, access peripherals. Generic connection framework. How do I have connectivities, okay? In a generic way. One thing that is really cool about these two APIs, everything is in a generic way. So it doesn't matter if you are turning an LED on or off, or if you are connecting to an I square C bus, they are all seen by the platform as devices, and they're all managed in the same way by a device manager, okay? Same thing for connections. It's a generic way to connect, and that actually makes things really simple. And we have security, OTSATSA. That's the basic platform. Good thing about that, on top of that, we have a bunch of optional API. So if you're interested in web services, there is web services and stuff like that. Location, messaging, et cetera. And finally, your application using all that. So it's actually a pretty, pretty big chunk of a platform in there. And we're gonna talk how we're actually splitting it, moving and being compatible for what we're actually going to have in Java 9 and the modularity of the Java platform. So how we're aligning to that. Um, components of EMI, CLDC, briefly mentioned that. On top of that, we have profile, that is the mid ME EP8, okay? On SC, we don't really have like one-to-one -one comparison for those, okay? We do have on SC, of course, the virtual machine that is included in the CLDC, but for mid P, we don't have equivalent, okay? We just have some additional APIs, okay? Device IO API, that's the key one, is part of ME. There is not availability in SE, okay? If you pay attention to the beginning, the jacket, I call it the jacket, right? So I started with ME, okay? Because first I needed all connectivity. And then I told you that I migrated to SE because I needed the UI. 
So what happens with the connectivity if we don't have the device I.O.? Right? So right now, there are, so the idea is device I.O. will be available also in SE. Right now, as it is, there is none available. What I use, it was called J, uh, um, Pi 4 Java, okay? And, 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 and what that library allow, us, allow me to do is to have all the connectivity to the devices. So it's an external API, very well written, and that's the one I use. So you can still use external libraries to have that connectivity, but just be careful because it's not part of the standard platform, not yet. SATSA, so we do have a correspondent on SC. It's a little different uh, because on, on, on ME, we're, we're looking into security, trust services. We have a way to sign your application. So there's a whole area about security. Um, we do have on SC, it's just partially equivalent. Okay, Java ME versus SC flying over. Again, a little bit more details. So support, so we're trying to align those. ME is trying to align. SE is full Java SE compatible, okay? For hardware, so on ME, we're talking low end. Uh, we're talking about any time, anything from 128 kilobyte of run as a minimum to 32 megabytes of run, okay? On the SC side, so we have, you know, mid-range to high-end general purpose devices, anything from 32 or 64 megabytes of RAM and up, okay? Startup time, so it's also different. On ME, is very short. On SC, is about five seconds compared to 100 milliseconds on the ME side. Multitasking, threading, um, is a standard part of the platform. Um, on SE, is not part of the standard platform. Flexibility, connectivity, and networking. So we do support in the SE, in the ME side, wired and wireless. There's no standard on the SE part. Dedicated embedded functionality. So of course it's given on ME. Runtime optimization is part of it. Be able to configure your, your IO, uh, co to configure your application, have IO access. Be able to do remote operation. This is a key one. We have um, a bunch of sensors, uh, humidity sensors, distributed in the Amazon jungle. So you program these guys. Okay, they are sensing, collecting the information, and sending that to a central station, right? Once you distribute the sensors, okay, you did an update to the application. What do you do? You're not going to send somebody to the Amazon jungle and collect all of them, bring it back to the office, reprogram all of them, then send somebody there and put it back, okay? So the good thing about this allow you to remote connect to those devices so you can flash a new uh, application into it, okay? You can actually, in a remote way, control it. You can kill an application and restart it, things like that. So very efficient, again, you don't have to go out there, collect everything, so that's part of remote operation and management. We don't have, we have general embedded enhancement on SE, some memory management, Etc. Dedicated embedded tooling. Okay. Um, I'm an IDE person. I love to use the IDEs. Um, and I use a lot uh, NetBeans. And I'm going to show you a little bit. The good thing about the IDE is, in this case, NetBeans, it provides you with emulators. So let's say you do not have the real device with you. You just create an emulator with the specification that you need, and you can create your application and run it against that, okay? So even without, so we, we provide you with some emulators, 
the, the, the basic one, but you can actually configure your own, okay? Very easy. So in NetBeans, you can say run. So for example, I have my Raspberry Pi connected to my machine. I'm creating code, compiling. When I say run from my machine, automatically go through the wire and run it on my Raspberry Pi without me to have to do anything. Of course, I have to specify where the machine is, pretty much just specifying IP address of my Raspberry Pi. That's all I need. So as long as I can reach that Raspberry Pi through an IP address, you can deploy remotely, right? So it's actually very convenient. Um, to be honest with you, I get this, I got this slide from Terrence Barr. He's the project manager of um, ME. I wonder why he has no for SE embedded because you can actually do the same thing with embedded. So if you have your Raspberry Pi and it has Java SE on it, you can actually specify from NetBeans that external device and do the same thing. It's just different procedure to tell where it is, but you can actually do so. So I will kind of debate that no support for toolings, okay? Um, platform porting, so in ME, portable, extensible, and configurable to a variety of software and hardware. That's very important. And on SE, that's not the case. So if you think about it, um, we, when, all, when we start programming all these little devices, there is a lot, a lot of different hardware and software. Some of them contain a full OS. Four of them don't even have an OS on it. So it's very important, um, that part. For SE, that's not the focus. It's pretty much general purpose hardware. Right, we're not concerned about that. Um, target use, use cases for ME, so we're talking about wireless modules, smart sensors, etc. While on the SE side, we're talking about high-end medical application, industrial control systems, etc. <coughs> <coughs> This is a little bit of the um, VM and language features, what is available in what. Um, so Java 8 is all expected to be um, on ME. Again, Lambda is not there. And Invoke Dynamic, we're working on that. So that's kind of the next step for SE is there. So SE pretty much have everything. Uh, on the ME, fine-grained permissions. So on, on ME, what we have is, when you have an application, you have to define what APIs you're using and where you're running those, like the domain that you belong. Depending on that domain, you have certain permissions to do or not do certain things. So we do have a fine grain uh, permission support for ME. SE compatible class format file, yes, it's all by code. Java bytecode, service locator available in both. We do not have support for reflection, serialization, invoke dynamic, and all that on ME. Okay. Native application, so GNI is not part of ME. It is of SE. User-defined class loaders, and no for ME. Runtime annotations, no. Threads, groups, and demons. Also no for SE, for ME. Again, these are the kind of things that you need to look up when you're designing your application. What do you need to include? And which of the two platform has it? Okay. Um, I'm not going into all these. Um, this is just the core platform APIs. And pretty much for SE, everything is full. And then a minor difference uh, here on ME, okay? One of those are just a subset of it. Util, so we don't have the util package on ME. Uh, um, collections, um, it's a subset. So we do not have support for the new Java collections and stream API, that's not there yet. 
Um, there's no concurrency for ME, so there's no such a thing. Um, comparables, closable, and auto-closable, yes, is part of it. IO is made by generic configuration framework that we just briefly talk about it, et cetera. Other platforms, um, so we use the profiles, mid P, uh, ME, EP8, there's no that on SE. Um, the different configure Java uh, generic connection framework and the equivalent for SE, et cetera. So again, this is more like a reference table for you. Now we have, so remember the first, the, the big um, uh, platform overview of Java ME. So we have CLDC, MIDP, Generic Connection Framework, Device Access API, and SATSA, right? And on top of that, there were a bunch of things. Those are the things that are optional. Um, the good for this, and we're gonna see in the modularity, is from now on, when you create your application, you're going to tell which modules you need, which pieces you need. And only those pieces are gonna be included or required for your execution. So, and you can actually have functionality that is optional. So you can have things, if I have access to this particular package, then I can do extra features. If no, I can run with a less feature, let's call it, okay? So again, there are all the GSR and what they are. So pretty much web services support, messaging, security, location, XML processing, etc. Okay, now configure, how to configure. So this is where we talk about making the platform modular. How we're aligning with what is coming with Java 9 and modularity. So on SE, as it is right now, we have compact profiles. So we're not there yet, so you know the modularity of the Java platform was originally scheduled for eight. It just took longer than we expected, so we push it to the nine release. For this release, we have a pre-modularization era, if you wanna call it, and that's where we talk about compact profiles. So we split the platform pretty much in three different profiles. So the idea was, allowing the platform to scale down to mid-range at embedded devices. So if you don't need the whole rack of Java, you can let me know. Maybe you just need the very smallest of the profiles and you will be able to run, okay? So a few things. You as a developer need to tell me what profile you run on, okay? And if I'm running an application, I should be able to find out what profile the application require, okay? Um, it's coarse grain concentric rings. So we have the um, compact profile one, and then we have compact profile two that include all the profile one, and then we have three on top that includes two and one, and then you have the full GRE. Okay, visually, this is what we have, okay? So we're talking about the base compact profile, right, base compact one, then two that include one, and then three that include two and one, and then the whole thing, okay? And of course, the JVM. So this is a little bit how the, the, the profiles are created. So how do you know which one you need? Right, so it's pretty much looking into the profiles and see what is contained in each profile. So this is just an um, just an example of a list. It's not very extensive. The idea is is telling you compact one. This is what it includes. Okay, of course the core what I need to run, 
security, serialization, collections, concurrency, concurrency, uh, reflection, all that is part of that, okay? If you're not doing any JDBC or any security, you can just run on that profile. If you need JDBC support, then we're talking about Compact 2, okay? If you need about GMX or GNDI, then we're talking about Compact Profile 3. Or if you're using any of the other, you just need the whole um, uh, API, okay? So you can decide which one you're actually going to use. So to be able to show that and define that, there is a two new things. When you use the compiler, Java C compiler, there is an option now that is the profile, okay? So you can specify which profile you require for your application, okay? Again, this is manual, so you will have to check. That's when I say the tools are really handy. We're gonna see how tools, for example, Nedin is able to detect by looking into the code into your import statements, what profile you need. And if you specify a profile one and you are using JDBC, it will actually show an error, okay? So again, if you wanna do command line, you have to manually specify. Now, what happens if you get a jar file, okay? How can I find out from a jar file, where does it need to run? Does it need profile one, two, or three? So the way to extract that information from the jar, from the class file, will be using JDEPS, okay? Minus P will print that information out. So if you get a hello class, hello world class, you don't know which profiles we're looking into. By executing that, it will tell you the APIs that we're using, and the profiles. In this case, we're good with compact one, okay? Now on Emmy, we kind of have an alignment to this one too, and we call it the profile sets, okay? Pretty much the same idea is to enable Java Emmy to be able to scale in a wide range of embedded devices, okay? Allow us to do pick and choose what APIs I need. So it's pretty much the same idea, but for Java ME. Only minimal set of API packages are mandatory, the rest are optionals. So remember that line on top that was all the optionals APIs. Well-defined model to ensure predictability of the Java ME platform. Okay, again, if my application has that information, if I can extract that information from my application, that ensure that I know the environment I need to properly run my application. Okay, big picture here, but pretty much the same idea, okay? We have the CLDC8, on top of that we have the profile, Okay, the minimum profile set. So the minimum profile set is um, require a minimum of 128 kilobytes of run. Recommend the one will be 256. And what it has is the minimal profile set. So the minimum that we need to be able to run Java ME application. It has core APIs, okay, and the targeting devices, of course, are gonna be the smallest ones, okay? Then we have the standard profile set. So now we're moving into bigger devices, 512 kilobyte of RAM, up to recommended of one megabyte. And then we have support for software services like multitasking, application management, shared libraries, and things like that, okay, events. There are optional packages. So they could be optional packages that are part of the standard profile set. And then you have the full profile and include the basic ME platform plus all the optional APIs. Now, new to all this, um, so we have 
Java ME embedded for the Raspberry Pi for a while. Now we have a developer preview of Java ME 8.1. Uh, and it's actually targeting ARM devices that are Cortex M3 and F4 microcontrollers. Okay, so again, it's available. It's still developer preview, but it's actually good. Oh. So, what about tools, right? So, we talk about all this beauty of modularization. How, again, use tools. So beauty of NetBeans, you can see here, as long as you're using the JDK 8, see how you can have the profile option. So in your project, the information of your project, you can specifically set what profile you want to use. Okay? Let's say you decided that you're going to run, you think, you're pretty sure, your application need compact profile one, right? Oh, well, maybe you forgot a little piece of JDBC that you were using or something there that was no part of there. The IDE will hide it up for you. So IDE is able to see the Java effect, Java, Java X naming is no part, gonna highlight, and it's gonna tell you seeing the messages is not available in that particular profile, you need to adjust it, okay? Let's say you import something, right? So by importing a library or a jar or something to your project, might break it too, so the tool will also let you know. The good thing, if you are a NetBeans user, you can right click to your project and you can ask the tool to fix it for you, okay? So here, for example, it says what it is, and you can actually change the profile to a different profile. In this case, if you're three and you're still getting issues, you need the full profile. Again, the tool will actually, so remember you have the common line, but of course it's actually way easier um, to have the tool that lets you know. Um, so that was pretty much about comparing the two platforms. I did want to show you a little bit of code, especially because we talk about how beautiful and how easy it is to create code that talk to peripherals in a generic way. So what I did in this section is a very small uh, section that I want to show you a piece of code. So we're comparing Java ME with Java SE embedded. Java SE embedded, to be honest, there is no reason for me to cover. We are all Java developers, so it's the same Java I see. So I want to cover especially Java ME embedded that was different. In this case, the device access API, okay? So we're gonna look a little bit at this guy over here, okay? So we talk about having a configuration, right? That include the VM, and then on top of that, we have the profile. So we mentioned that over and over again, and pretty much what we're done, what we talk about, how we're aligning to Java 8, etc. And the packages. So you see that we briefly mentioned all the packages are optional except the first one. That is the required for your application to run. For the device APIs, so what we have is an API, and on top of that, we are actually going to create your application. So what we are allowing to do is a generic way to access devices in a neutral, in a platform neutral way, okay? Again, it doesn't matter if you're turning a light on and off, or if you're talking to an I square C bus. It is the same way to talk, okay? This is what is support. Of course, I'm not going to cover all that because that will be like a whole session. All I wanted to do is briefly show you two, a very simple one and a complicated one, and show you that really is the same way to talk, okay? Um, one thing before we can show you that, you need permissions, okay? Um, so the idea with this inlet, 
now from Java ME8 are required to be digitally signed, okay? If you are a developer and you are, you know, in a developer environment, you can work around it by uh, adding this particular line to the property file. So again, it's just a workaround just for development environments. How we talk through the device manager. Everything goes through this guy. This guy is the one that knows how to register something, unregister, open a connection, etc. So this is the guy, okay? Now, all the things that we are connecting are devices. This is the, the abstraction. No matter where we're connecting, there are devices. So a device knows how to close, unlock, let me know if it's open or not, okay? Of course, we want to listen. There are sensors. We want to hear what's going on, right? So we have events. If we have events, we have listeners, right? And of course, we have exceptions. So all this is actually included. So let's see what happens when you want to turn on and off an LED. Device manager dot open, you're opening a connection to a particular thing, either ID one or zero. They can respond to the pins. How you turn it on? Very simple. You say pin, set value, true. Through the device manager, you open and you send it true or false, right? Now we talk about we have listeners, so a light, you either turn it on and off. But you have switches, you can listen to the switch when you push it or release, okay? So a little bit more complicated, you have a switch, but again, see how you can actually get the switch, again, through the device manager, and you say the same thing, open, okay? What you are opening, so you can open by ID, or if you need more information, you can create a configuration object to provide that information. But again, I want to point it out, it's the same device manager, okay? And then some listeners, okay? Again, how to turn it on and off. This is the method that we get call invoked when something changed, and I'm just gonna turn the LED on and off. Now we have this beauty of I square C, okay? Where we have a bus that has basically two lines, one for data and one for clock. And the data is being transmitted by following the clock signals, okay? So we can have a bunch of people, a bunch of things connected to the same bus as long as they have different addresses, okay? So very cool, right? Again, how do we connect? See the beauty line here, device manager dot open. Who are you opening? An I square C object. So we have a configuration that encapsulates the data I need, but the device manager is the one that opened the connection. When you open, you read or write to that particular bus. So again, what I want to point it out is it's a very generic way to connect things. Um, again, this is the, the key difference from ME and SE embedded beside the constraints of the, platform, the underlying platform, okay? So tips, again, you need to know your goals. What platform you are going to use. What kind of application you're building, okay? Be aware and plan all the way, okay? More than ever, Java skills and code can actually scale from small devices to big ones if you design it properly, okay? Platform-specific functionality should be factored out, for sure. Be clear about what is your case and, again, target how small you have to be, how big it is, how deeply embedded, et cetera. Hints for optimizing for resource-constrained devices. So if you really need to 
have a really, really constrained devices, you have to design for that particular target. Be aware of memory or any processing limitation you might have. Partition your problem, this is a key one. Partition your, pro your problem and keep the processing on the device as small as possible. And push all the heavy lifting to the other layer. So just push it back to either the gateway or the server, okay? Leverage all the Java ME platform that I cover, all the functionality that you have, okay? Again, the idea is to have that API, for example, the device IO APIs available on Java SE. And be careful and always conserve the footprint that you have. Future and resources again, so link, link, links. Um, again, lambdas are not there yet for Java ME embedded. It's a working process. The goal is to have compatibility and developer productivity. APIs, additions, and updates. So we're gonna have changes in there. And again, um, trying to align even more the two platforms. Last but not least, um, few links. I do recommend to follow up Terrence Barr, that is the project manager for uh, Java ME. And so he will write about anything that is cool, that is coming, etc. documentation, tools, and runtime could be found out there. And with that, I wanna thank you very much for your time.